Welcome to a brand new tutorial. Today we will work on special analysis tools. You will learn how to download contour lines and transform them into a triangulated irregular network. Then you will use this data to create an elevation raster. From this raster, you will learn how to use several geoprocessing tools like aspect, slope, or real shade. To finish, you will use the focal statistics and minus tools to create a topographic position index map. So, without much further ado, let's go to the video. So, first click on map, then you save to, to a folder. In my case, I will choose this one, then uh, no, I, I will actually create a new folder inside this one. Uh, for example, ArcGIS. I will give the name ArcGIS. Uh, click OK. Uh, and give it a name. Uh, I will call it YouTube in my case. And click OK. Wait a little bit. OK. First, I will remove the base map because I'm not going to use it. Now I will click on add data and import the shapefile I need. In this case it will be the Breccia province in Italy. Mm, right here and click OK. So to download a bunch of cool data like this one you can search for download data by country diva GIS click on the first link Uh, search for the country you want in my case Italy and then you have a bunch of bunch of data you can choose from and then click download now I will click on add data again and import contour lines that represent the elevation of my study area so in my case I have them divided by three different feature classes to download contour lines for your maps Go to your browser, type opendm.info, go to downloads, contours as shapefile, zoom in, and with the control key pressed, draw the grid you want, and then you just click here to download. Now I will add labels uh, to this one here so you can see the detail of, of these lines. These contour lines have an equidistance of 25 meters so they're not very useful to use in a project when you need to be more precise. Um, the ideal equidistance will be like 10 meter or less but for the purpose of this tutorial this will do. Now that all the data I need is imported to my project, I will merge these three contour lines into one single feature class using the merge tool. The input will be the contour lines and for the output choose the location and give it a name. So I will, I will save it right here and call it for example Bretch uh, merge uh, or actually Brecht uh, CL for contour lines. In this case, because I didn't predefine one coordinate system, the project associated the coordinate system of the first imported shapefile. So in this case, the Brecht shapefile. So as you can see, if you go to properties and click here on source and special reference, you can see right here the predefined coordinate system. Now just click on run to merge the three contour lines shapefile into, into one single feature class. Click on run, wait a second, select these, these three and remove them from the project. Now let's create a TIN. TIN refers to a triangulated irregular network. It's a data structure used to represent terrain surfaces through a network of interconnected triangles. TIN store elevation data at vertices and use triangulation to interpolate elevation values across the surface. They are used for terrain modeling, visualization and analysis in various applications like topographic mapping, hydrology and 3D visualization.
teams allow for efficient representations of complex terrain, facilitating accurate spatial analysis and visualizations in GIS environments. So, to do this, search for creatine. The output will be the folder you want to save it. Give it a name. So, right here, I will create a folder called tin. Click on OK. Give it a name. Choose the coordinate system. The first input will be the contour lines. Height field will be elevation. And choose soft line. For the second input, select the Breccia province and soft clip. After that, just click on, on the run button. Let's just wait a little bit. Okay. I will unselect this too. Uh, and as you can see, the bluish tones are the, the lower terrains and the whites and grays the, the higher elevations. Now for the next step, let's transform this tin into a raster. Tin to raster conversion is a process that translates tin data into raster format. It involves converting irregularly spaced tin triangles into regular grid of pixels. This conversion enables smoother integration of tin data with other raster-based special datasets and analysis techniques. So, to do this, search for tin to raster. Click here. The input will be the tin. Set the output. Give a name. R underscore breccia. This here stays the same. Observations change to cell size. This will be the size of each pixel. And type 25 meters. So the lower this value, the heavier the raster file. So the coordinate system is the same and click on run. Wait a second. It's, the process is finished. So we will not use this one anymore so we can remove it. Now let's change the symbology. So green to lower heights and red to the bigger heights. And as you can see, um, Breccia have two distinct terrain morphologies, so the south is flatter, while the north is way more hilly. Ok, so now let's create an aspect. Aspect is the direction that a slope faces on a terrain surface. It is typically measured in degrees clockwise from north, ranging from 0 to 360. Aspect is crucial in understanding terrain characteristics such as solar radiation exposure, hydrological flow patterns and ecological habitats. It helps identify areas prone to erosion, vegetation distribution and microclimate variations. So to do this, search for aspect. The input value will be the DEM, so in this case R underscore Breccia. The output will be the S underscore Breccia for the name, click on save and leave the other options with the default values. Set the output as the same as the current map and click on run. So with this we have a visual representation of the direction that the downhill slope faces. So for example, we have a lot of flat surfaces as you can see here with the color gray uh, here we see this, for example, this hill is facing north and uh, this one is facing south. Now let's move to the next step that is creating a slope. Slope refers to the steepness or inclination of the terrain surface at a specific location. It's typically measured as the rate of change in elevation over an horizontal distance. Slope values are expressed as percentage or degree, indicating the angle of inclination relative to the horizontal plane. To generate a slope map, you just search for slope, 
then drag and drop the DEM as the input. Uh, again, set your output uh, right here. Uh, give a name like this. And uh, here you can either choose to re represent a map in degrees or in percentage. So in this example, I will select degrees and leave the other options with the default values. You wait a little bit. So we now see that the slope is finished. As we could expect, the flatter surfaces as the lower slopes. And in the mountains, we encountered the bigger slopes. For, for example, I will select the black color to show you the slopes between 45 and, and 90 degrees. I will select this one, like this, okay? So, the next step is to create a nil shade. A nil shade simulates the shadows cast by sunlight on the terrain, highlighting its topographic features and providing a three-dimensional appearance. So, to create a hill shade, just search for hill shade. Once again, the DEM will be the input. Set the output and give it a name. Like this. Here you can change the azimuth to represent the relative position of the sun and the altitude to represent the angle of elevation above the horizon. Set your coordinate system and click on run. OK, so because we left the azimuth as the default value, uh, the shadows are coming from northwest and the angle of the sun at 45 degrees. To finish this tutorial, let's create a topographic position index. A topographic position index provides information about how a particular location compares to its neighboring terrain. TPI is calculated by taking the elevation value of a central cell and subtracting the mean elevation value of its surrounding cells within a defined neighborhood or surge radius. The resulting value indicates whether the central cell is located in a depression, on a ridge, or in a flat area compared to its surroundings. So, to create a TPI, first we need to search for focal statistics. Now drag the DM into the input field and set the output in your folder like this. So, give it a name. Uh, leave this option as default and set the width and the height at 25. Okay, and because we want to create a TPI, we will leave min as the statistic type. Set the, the coordinate system and click on run. As I explained earlier, now we need to subtract the, the focal statistics result to the DEM. So there's more ways to do this, but we will use the minus tool. So search for minus, like this, click here. So, for the first input, we will use the DEM. And for the input number 2, we will use the focal statistics. Set up your output, give it a name, TPI underscore branch in my case, and click Save. OK. Now let's let's give some colors to the TPI. Let's select classify and create uh, three classes. Okay. So the negative values represent valleys. I will give the color green. The values near zero are flat surfaces. Okay. And the higher values are the ridges of the mountain, so I'll give the color mm. I'll give the color red like this. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment what you want to learn next.